puts all the pieces together. Blending a tradition rich in memories with innovation and the latest in television technology. Great moments come alive on NBC Sports. Today, it's doubleheader action as most of you will see hot-hitting Dave Winfield on the Yankees against the California Angels. Or some of you will see Andre Dawson and the Cubs face the Astros, winners last night over the Cubs. Then the second half of the doubleheader pits home run hitting Daryl Strawberry in the Mets against the Giants. Or some of you will see the Minnesota Twins battle the Detroit Tigers who trail the Yankees by just a half game in the AL East. But first, NBC Sports presents Major League Baseball, an inside look. Brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. And by the Century 21 System, the largest real estate sales organization in America. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marv Albert in New York, and this is the start of wall-to-wall -wall baseball here on NBC. A busy day, and in just a couple of minutes, we'll be talking with Yankee star Dave Winfield, the Major League's leading hitter, and he has done it under difficult circumstances. But first, a look at last night's highlights of note. In Pittsburgh, it was a sacrifice bunt by Jose Lee that supplied the sloppiest ending of the night. Dave Collins of the Reds threw it away with Eric Davis not able to come up with it. Barry Bonds scored all the way from first with the winning run. Four straight wins for the Pirates. They're now only one game behind the first place Mets. Jose Uribe came through with this RBI double in the seventh. Good effort by Kevin McReynolds, but it provided the game winner. The Giants beat the Mets 3-2. In the West, Nolan Ryan and struck out 11. His first complete game in more than two years. Houston beat the Cubs 8-2 to move within one and a half of the Dodgers. In the American League, Frank Robinson's Orioles beat Dave Stewart of Oakland, who finally lost. He's 8-1, a home run by Eddie Murray, the first given up by Stewart in 57 and a third. Orioles beat Oakland 4-1. Earlier in the week, manager Bobby Valentine's contract was extended through 1991. Last night, the Rangers made it seven straight wins. They beat Kansas City 2-1. In Detroit, Doyle Alexander went all the way on a seven-hit shutout. Tigers knocking off the Twins 7-0. Detroit within a half game of the Eastern leading Yankees, who last night saw a Ryan Downing connect for this two-run home run with two out in the ninth against Cecilio Guante just inside the foul pole, sparking the Angels over the Yanks 5-4, which led to Billy Martin questioning the pitch selection of his catcher, Don Slott. Well, when we come back, a talk with Yankees outfielder Dave Winfield, and uh, he is, of course, a best-selling author, and he's leading the major leagues in uh, hitting at 413. This coming off a very explosive week for Billy Martin and his Yankees. Dave Winfield is leading the Major Leagues in hitting with a batting average of 413. He is in his eighth year with the Yankees, following eight in San Diego. An 11-time All-Star, he has been a consistent 100 RBI man. With 29 RBIs in the month of April, he equaled a Major League record. His eight years as a Yankee have been stormy because of his rocky relationship with Yankee owner George Steinbrenner, a relationship that was not enhanced by the release of his much-discussed book entitled Winfield, A Player life, a book that has made it to the national bestseller list. Now, Dave joins us from Yankee Stadium, where later today the Yankees will go up against the California Angels. Dave, it has been well documented that the Yankees have tried on several occasions this season to trade you. Now, among the teams interested, the Orioles, the Cubs, and the Astros, but your contract calls for a veto power over a deal. Now, this despite the 413 average, but it's clear that George wants you elsewhere. What would it take for you to say yes to a trade? There is nothing that I would say yes to a trade right now. We have a great team, a great continuity, great chemistry. We all get along well. We think we have the best team, and we're here to win this year. So I really dismiss any, any kind of discussion about trade. Dave, George Steinbrenner appeared to be most upset about this particular passage uh, in your book. Uh, Willie Randolph was paraphrased as saying to you, you can be a good Yankee and a well-respected one, but as a black man, you're never going to be a true Yankee. Now, Randolph was quick to deny that he said that to you and was upset that the uh, statement was published. What is your relationship like now with Willie Randolph? 
Willie and I are fine. We're both professionals. We know each other very well. And if we disagree on what we discussed eight years ago, then that's fine. But you'll see that when people read the book, it's not an inflammatory statement because on the other hand, we talk about the progress and the changes that have been made all through baseball, including the Yankees. They have black people in the front office. Chris Chambliss is a, is a hitting instructor. Uh, you look at the composition of the team. So when a statement is made at the time, I mentioned a lot of other incidents, what I saw and felt and heard at the time, and it's not inflammatory and it's not really derogatory. It had to do with gaining notoriety or acceptance easily. Several Yankee executives were quoted this week as saying that Billy Martin's alleged escapades in the men's room at a cocktail lounge in Arlington uh, distracted the ball club. Now, Martin can certainly manage a team, but uh, when a guy gets into difficulty as often as he has off the field, uh, doesn't that affect the, uh, the relationship that uh, players have with the manager? Look, the players try not to get, get involved in those kind of situations, really. We, we know Billy's a field general, he's a manager, and we go by what he says. He puts a lineup out there, and we just follow suit. And, um, you know, we, we think he's still the best manager, and we go with it. Who will Dave Winfield be playing for a year from now? Right now, it'll be the Yankees. But we'll see. Anything can happen. All right. Dave, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. All right, Dave Winfield of the Yankees. It has certainly been a furious eight seasons for Dave Winfield. We'll be back after these words. I find baseball one of the most painfully boring sports in America. I prefer football or basketball. I like the speed, the agility, the interaction, the physical sweating. I like the grittiness of it. Baseball is too clean. It's too safe. It's too predictable. I like to go to the kitchen and make myself a little snack during baseball. And I just find the guys really unattractive. They have pouchy stomachs. I like Jim Palmer in a pair of underwear, but that's about as far as it goes. And even that, I don't even buy. It looks like a Ken doll. There's nothing there. It's not, it's very odd. Yes, Sandra always looking at the uh, positive side, and uh, Jim Palmer uh, will receive equal time at a later date. With no apologies to uh, Sandra Bernhard, let's take a look at what took place in baseball over the past week. Now, the hottest team, the Oakland Athletics, sparked by Mark McGuire and his powerful friends, they ran a string of 14 straight wins, a club record before losing to Detroit, the longest win streak in the majors since Casey won 16 in a row in 1977. A couple of strong pitching efforts, Roger Clemens of Boston with a three-hitter, striking out 16 of the Casey Royals, and Mark Langston of Seattle came up with a career-high 16 strikeouts and a win over Toronto. The most deceptive play of the week, Dale Swaim of Milwaukee, victimized by the hidden ball trick. It was second baseman Brad Wellman of the Royals who did not give the ball back to the pitcher, was able to get Swaim, but he let off second, awaiting the pitch. It happened so quickly the cameras barely got it. And the Braves continue to have their problems after Lance Parrish of the Phils bounced out. The scoreboard flashed three outs. End of inning. But this was wrong. In fact, only two were out, but the Braves left the field. The umpire said, wait a minute, something's wrong. So the Braves came back to the amusement of Philly players. And how about Colorado Springs beating Phoenix in a Triple-A game, 33 to 12. 13 home runs were hit, eight by Colorado Springs, a Cleveland farm team. One time, Major Leaguer Ed Lynch was the starter. He allowed 15 runs on 14 hits and three and two thirds. 24 hours later, Ed Lynch announced his retirement.